Rakoto me tamata te hui ki te karakia ma Councillor Templeton te karakia. Kia ora koutou, a Maori ora ki te whare. Whakataka te hau ki te uru, whakataka te hau ki te tonga. Kia mā kina kina ki uta, kia mā tara tara ki tai. E hi a kei ana te atakura. He tio, he huka, he hohu, ti hei Maori ora. Kia ora. Kia ora. Kia ora. Thank you. Uh, I have a number of apologies uh, from Councillor Chewing Goff for lateness, uh, Councillor Galloway for early departure, and Councillor Major for absence. Um, do I have someone to move them? Aaron, seconded by Sarah. All those in favour? Aye. Carried. Uh, I'm unaware of any declarations of interest, so I'm assuming there are none. Uh, confirmation of minutes from 10th of March. Moved uh, Jake, second to Pauline. All those in favour? Aye. Yeah, we have one public forum from Chris Baxter. Welcome, Chris. Uh, you have five minutes. Uh, so the floor is yours. Um, Welcome, Michelle. So, yes, yeah, so I'm just going to propose for a um, cycleway for uh, between the limited shops and the red zone on Stanwell Road. Um, bit of background for me. I'm a member of the um, Inner City East Linwood Revitalisation Committee and also a member of the Green in the East. Um, so, what we're proposing here is a temporary um, cycleway in order to get it in part of the, um, into the Green Corridor and the Linwood Village street, streetscaping. So the Green the East project, one of their main focuses is a Green Corridor between the Linwood shops and the Red Zone, um, as you can see on the list on the, um, on the map there. Um, and there's also there's a streetscaping project along the Linwood Village itself. So those are both coming up, hopefully, in the long-term plan. Um, but neither of them at this stage um, have a cycleway component. So what we'd like to do is get a temporary cycleway in place before that happens so that it can be included within the existing budgets. Um, so why do we need it here? What we're saying... Oops, gone too far. Um, so the Green in the East has sort of identified Stanmore Road as a pretty important link between... Um, the Linwood Village and the um, Avon Corridor. Um, and I've, as you can see from that photo, it's not that nice to walk up and down or cycle up and down at the moment. So it's pretty important to get that link there, to get people from the Linwood Village to use the, um, the, the red zone and also to allow people that are using that red zone for recreation, running, cycling, dog walking, etc., to get up into the Linwood Village and hopefully. Um, buy a coffee at a cafe, and do other shopping there. Um, so I've just got a few other photos there, just sort of what it looks like at the moment. So there is an existing cycleway going from the Richmond end of um, Stanmore Road up to the bridge. Um, so we're proposing extending that as well. Um, So that sort of includes that um, sort of um, connection there. Um, and there's also a proposal at some point of, of potentially pushing that further forward up to the, um, up to the um, Phillips Town hub. Um, but yeah, so what we're proposing at this stage is try to get it on the plan because it's going to save money getting it in at this stage rather than just sort of adding it later. Um, it'll make it better because we can get it into the design, we can get rather than just attacking it onto the side. Um, that's pretty much me. Cool. Thank you, Chris. Do you want to add anything, Michelle? Uh, just to um, just to reiterate the, that what Chris is saying in terms of the importance of with the streetscape work happening, that that, that there is 
uh, it enables activation the cycle way, this linkage with the red zone, because there are a lot of people that are using the red zone and coming and going from other parts of town, really keen to have a way to bring them down into the into Linwood Village, particularly once the streetscape's done, and also just that this is a prime time for it to happen. Excellent. Um, thanks for this. So just a question. So when you talk about cycle lanes, are you actually referring to the cycle ways? Are you referring to cycle lanes or separated cycle well, ways? Well, because there's going to be a design process for um, the green corridor and the streetscaping, I'd like to not be overly prescriptive on what we actually yep. propose there, let it up to the designers of those two projects, just make sure they have some form of cycle infrastructure. Okay, excellent. Um, we've got time for we have a question if someone has a question. Yanni? Yes. What year is that? Probably not so a question a for sort of in of progress the public, now, as I understand, yeah. at the planning yeah. stage. Yeah. So that's that's the that's part of the um, the urgency, if you will, is to, to to that we use that project. It would be more efficient to do it while that project's taking place. So this one's talking about the Stanmore along Stanmore Road between the. Um, yep. The streetscapers. Yep. Okay. No, that's yeah, that's fine. And look, I've, I'll cut you off there because it hit the five minute. But I've I've got a resolution there just to make sure this doesn't get lost, and then we can refer it to the right people, and it definitely can be considered amongst that wider work and local connections that are being done. But thank you very much for your time. Cheers. Jake, do you want to move that resolution? Uh, Yanni, you happen to second it? Confused about it. Um, I just, I think we do need to make sure that's actual get the information on the project as well. Yeah. Because we just had the greening the yeah um, corridor thing at our board yesterday, and a lot of stuff was considered out of scope. And this is like you know important, so it would be good to get it included. But we do need a bit of understanding about what the actual project is yeah. and what the scope is. All right, all those in favour? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Uh, there's no deputations by appointment and no uh, petitions. Uh, so we'll move to item 7, uh, 2021 Atara Bike Challenge. Um, so the 2021 Atara Bike Challenge uh, it's been a great event where people and organisations across New Zealand compete in teams to earn points uh, for kilometres ridden, days ridden, and the number of people they've encouraged to ride on each team. Uh, Christchurch had the highest participation rate nationally. Yay. <laughs> Almost 900 new riders joined the Christchurch Challenge, and over 6,000 local people participated in this great event. Locals logged 1.4 million kilometres of rides over the month of February. That's like riding around the equator 28 times. <laughs> no one likes Christchurch. Uh, together, <coughs> challenge participants saved 83,630 kilometres of CO2, which is equivalent to emissions of 36,000 litres of petrol. Council staff received some great feedback on the challenge, including from Tusker Prosthetics in Rickerton, where Douglas messaged Council said the Aotearoa Bike Challenge was a great way to bring our entire company together. We're all really looking forward to it again next year. Before the Bike Challenge, we'd race for car parks in the morning. Not so much anymore. Now we need to get a bigger bike shed. <laughs> Christchurch workplaces dominated the national boards with four of the seven size categories nationally won by Christchurch companies, many of whom are here today. Congratulations to Becca, Abley, Living Earth, Christchurch and Christchurch City Council. As you all know, Council has put in significant investment into the major cycleways programme and other cycle infrastructure, but the success of this challenge is really down to the people here today. The challenge champions and advocates and encouragers in their different workplaces. You do the important work of encouraging and supporting your workmates to get on a bike to experience the fun, fresh air and freedom of cycling. Thank you so much for all your efforts and congratulations on having seen off some tough competition 
to make it to the top of the local legal boards in your staff size categories. So congratulations. And we have a number of presentations to, to award because a lot of the winners are in Christchurch. Um, so I'd like to start with the uh, workplace with three to six staff. And in third place is Kaipoi Podiatry. Second place is the Isthmus Group. And first place is Sky Dome Wanaka, but they're not present today. But congratulations. <laughs> so the next category for workplaces was seven to nineteen staff. Third place, St Albans Medical Centre. <laughs> they um, can't, couldn't make it today. <laughs> um, so second place. Yeah. Alchemy, <laughs> Alchemy Group. <laughs> and in first place, Living Earth. Category is for workplaces with 20 to 49 staff, and in third place, Calibre Consulting. <laughs> Second place, Tasca Prosthetics. Place Ebley. <laughs> Unfortunately, they're not present today either. Now we go on to workplaces with 50 to 199 staff. So, third place, Oricon. And in second place, GHD. Yeah, they 
diary, don't they? And now first place, Petal Dallamore Partners. Now the next category for workplaces with 200 to 499 staff. Third place, Christchurch Engine Centre. Place, Trimble Navigation New Zealand. First place, Becca. Now, for workplaces with 500 to 2,000 staff. Third place, IAG New Zealand. Second place, Airways Corporation New Zealand. And in first place, ARA Institute of Canterbury. And now for the final category for workplaces with more than 2,000 staff. In third place, University of Canterbury.
in second place, Canterbury District Health Board. Maybe we should ask for a drum roll because, in first place, for workplaces with more than 2,000 staff, Christchurch City Council. Congratulations again and enjoy celebrating your victory with your colleagues and um, we look forward to the next year's challenge and I'd just like to point out that's two years in a row for Christchurch City Council so, and we'll be going for a three-peat. <laughs> just ask what you can not allowed to enter. Ooh. <laughs> James, put K's in, Pauline, and... <laughs> Anyhow, let's move on. <laughs> um, I'm just going to change the agenda around slightly, and item 8 will be last. Um, so we're going to move to item 9, um, submission principles for the private plan change. Um, pretty sure everyone sh are aware of this. Is might just... Um, See if there's someone wants to move it. Sarah seconded Melanie. Is there any questions? All, right, all those in favour? Aye. Opposed? Carried. Thank you. Oh, were you against Darren? Okay. Darren against. Sorry, I didn't didn't hear you. Of course he wants it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm curious. That's why there's no point having a debate. I'm curious. I'm curious. Right, anyway, item 10. <laughs> uh, plan change 8, the Papakaina Kaina Nohana Zone Rule Amendments Notification. Uh, thank you. I'll get you just to give a brief overview of this paper. Okay. So, yeah, this is a uh, report for notification of uh, plan changes that we're proposing. Uh, and we've been working with um, Mahanui Kuratau and we've got um, Brad Thompson here from uh, that organisation. Um, and we've been working closely with the, the Runanga uh, across the, the Banks Peninsula on this. So, this is a plan change to really enable more Papakaina housing in the um, Papakaina uh, Kainanoa Hanga uh, zones across the peninsula. Um, and to remove some of the impediments to house, housing development there around, um, certainly around setbacks and um, earthworks and <coughs> some of the, um, <coughs> some, some of the, 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 the site coverage um, provisions as well, which has prevented um, some houses being built. We've uh, had a lot of uh, engagement with uh, Runanga. Uh, there's been, um, uh, Mahanui have done um, hui with the, with the Runanga across the peninsula. And 
we've also um, presented this to the Tonga committee as well. So, yeah, happy to take any so questions. Any questions? I know someone wants to, Aaron, move it, Sarah, second. Any debates? Andrew. Um, thank you. Just very briefly, I'd like to um, thank and acknowledge staff for what I know is a huge amount of work that's gone into um, this, um, yeah, this, this work. And um, I think this really shows the value of the good relationships that we've developed with um, local Runanga, in particular the um, value of the Te Honanga Papatipa Runanga Committee as well, where there's been some very positive discussion about this and where there's been the opportunity for answers and concerns to be um, raised and um, questions asked and answered. The um, changes that were made to the Papakainga zones in the district plan review, as we've seen from various presentations and um, work that's been presented as this has been developed, in many cases, even though the intention was good or unworkable, and this plan change actually gives effect to, if it's implemented, um, gives effect to the changes that were made in um, the district plan review so that they are able to be implemented and so that we can realistically look at these um, zones being developed alongside the wishes of the Runanga. Um, Realising that this only relates to planning, um, there are matters of infrastructure that obviously need to be dealt with as a separate matter, and I'm also aware that there's some work going on alongside the um, development contributions policy proposal, um, which will look at a realistic proposition to allow development in the Papakainga zones from a um, development contributions point of view as well. So I absolutely welcome this. Um, I think it's a great piece of work, and I um, look forward to seeing it progress. Thank you. Anyone else? Right. I'll put that. All those in favour? Aye. Opposed? Carried. Um, I'm just going to adjourn for five minutes just to make sure that we're okay to move on to the last item. Um, so we'll start back at five past ten. Mm -hmm.
restart the meeting. And um, I think Catherine's on Zoom. Okay, so Catherine, welcome, Jamie, James. Yeah, we had to do that so you could get here. So. Okay, so I, item eight, Diamond Harbour Wharf upgrade. Uh, welcome, Andrew and Sylvia. I'll get you to go over this and also um, just talk to your engagement with Nati Fiki too, please. Sure. Quick introduction. I guess the up, the upgrade of the Diamond Harbour Wharf has been a a topic for quite a few years now. Um, there's an increasing number of people using the ferry for transport purposes. Um, essentially, this report is requesting that we move uh, a preferred concept through to a detailed design phase, so there's a lot more work to do yet, um, and that will enable us to get accurate um, costings as well. And that will come back to um, the committee for endorsement before we proceed on to the next stage. Um, Sylvia, would you like to comment on the consultation with Ngāti Whiki? Certainly. So, um, last year we initially made contact with Ngāti Whiki to share them with them an outline of the project, give an outline of the project scope. We also shared with them the draft concept. Um, later then that was followed up as we started to prepare the resource consent application. Um, our environmental consultant was following up discussions and providing updates on um, the project as it progressed. Um, the feedback from Natafeke has been that they note that this is a small scale project. Um, the next steps that we would look to following today's decision would be to finalise the draft resource consent application which would be shared with Natafeke for their comment before being submitted. Thank you. Are there any questions? Yanni. Have we approached NZTA for funding? Uh, I no. think Richard would be able to answer that question. Um. Um, I'm not aware whether they've been approached or not, but some of this project, given it uh, has a public transport component to it, may be eligible for NZTA funding. So that's a discussion we need to have with them. And um, if the approval was gone, if, if the approval was given today to go through the detailed design, that's a discussion we can have with them. Right. And just in, under um, 7.1, I, I do find it particularly hard to follow our budget process when we don't, we're not given the project ID. So can you just tell me in terms of our long-term plan or our annual plan what the project ID is that's paying for this and We'd what years? We'd have to years? come back to you on... Yeah. Are you talking about our uh, well, CPMS project ID? It just says, like, preliminary cost estimates received during concept develop indicate that the project will be delivered with an existing harbour and marine structures budget. Yeah. Is there an actual... I'm just trying to understand where the money's coming from. Is there an actual... Right. Um, do, you want to know the, do you want to know the extent of the budget or the project ID number? Well, is, is there a specific project for the Diamond Harbour Bridge in our long-term plan yes, that is, is paying for this? Yes, there is. Yeah. So just in the future, could we reference that project ID? Because um, just the report makes it seem like there's another budget that's paying for lots of other things in terms of harbour and marine structures. But if there's a discrete budget for this, it'd be quite helpful to know what year the money's in and what the project ID is. So I don't know if that's... Yeah, um, so there's money in this year and there's also money in the long-term plan. But we can... When, when we bring back the detailed design, we'll absolutely bring back all of the funding details. Yep. Right. So there is money on budget, as, as referred to. But it's specifically for this project, not for any of the other marine structures. There's, there are two budgets. There is, a, there is a, an explicit one for Diamond Harbour, yeah. but there's also a program budget okay. for, re, for wharf renewal. So there's two elements to this project. One is the pontoon, and the other is the renewal of the wharf, so they can be funded from both streams. Okay. But once we have the detailed costings, that's when we'll bring back that level of detail. 
Okay, thanks. So just to reiterate, this project yeah. won't proceed beyond a design without further endorsement. Yeah, and you've got my amendment as well. Thanks. John, should we put that up? Yeah, that'd be good. Okay, could we put up Bjarni's amendment? And I think Jake's agreed to second it. Yeah. Do you want me to speak to it now or wait? Others may have questions. I'll wait for others to have questions. <laughs> That's right. You can take other questions now if you want. Do you have questions on this? I'm going to rule it out of order. Okay. That's you, can, you can say what it was. Yeah, so um, I was trying to, I think actually we should be building a bridge. So I was going to move that we actually build a bridge because it's much more sustainable and it reduces the carbon emissions. Yeah, yeah from Stoddard Point to the Littleton Harbour. Um, well, that's to be sourced out of the marine structures budget. What well, do you want to second that? <laughs> Stoddard Point. From Dunham Harbour, Harbour across to Littleton. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, it it's interesting that Yanni's raised this before we've had the opportunity to discuss it at our community board, but I imagine there would be some support. It's been rolled out of order, so we can't yeah. progress it, which is a shame. And it is. Are we still <laughs> right. Anyhow, okay. I think you got a couple of people, Yanni. <laughs> Anyhow, first of, right. first of all, move on. Oh, sort it. All right. Andrew, would like to. There's no more questions? Right. Okay. <laughs> Andrew, you'd like to, right. you would like to move this? Okay. Oh, yeah, Do we have someone that wants to? S oh, I'll second it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, debate. Andrew. Um, thank you. I mean, as noted, this project's been planned um, and looked forward to by the community for a very long time. Um, this represents significant safety and accessibility improvements. Um, and we've got to bear in mind that this is an important piece of public transport infrastructure. It may have recreational use, but its principal purpose is a piece of um, PT infrastructure. Um, there have been a number of incidents, a number of near misses, and a number of safety issues in the past, um, particularly with the stairs down to the ferry, particularly when there are rough seas and the ferry's moving against the steps or when the steps are wet and slippery. Um, and what we're proposing here will absolutely address these issues. It'll actually see those stairs replaced um, with this um, gangway and pontoon. The importance of the slope of the gangway um, is particularly important for accessibility. If you think of people with limited mobility, people with pushchairs and so on, um, the, the, um, the gangway and its gradient is particularly important in that regard. There's very strong support in the Diamond Harbour community for what we're doing here. Um, I was at the Diamond Harbour Community, Association, community Association's AGM earlier in this week, where there were around 200 people in the room, um, and I had very positive feedback from the community, not only on the project itself, um, and there's a compliment for staff here, um, on the consultation and engagement processes and the way that the engagement had been conducted with the community as well. Um, so I'm very happy to support this today, and I'm really progressing. Aaron. Yeah, I fully support this. Um, and the last time I was over there, I uh, and went on that wharf. I did look at it with the with this lens on, and um, considered that there are uh, this is definitely needed. Um, that 
part, Diamond Harbour there is also one of those, what you call a, a mini tourism gem that a lot of people from Christchurch should go to Littleton, jump on that boat and go over just for a wee day trip, take kids, take your parents, whatever. But it is an absolute gem to go do. And I would have supported Yanni's Bridge, especially if we could have um, used that island in the middle of the harbour as a prison as well. Um, would have been because once the prison closed lots of years later it became a really good tourist attraction so um, just let's keep our minds open Yanni yeah, um, just to say I don't know how many councils remember the deputation we had it must have been about six years ago yeah. um, and when people showed us the images of what it was like for people getting on and off the ferry um, I, I, I now know someone who's now got a, had a wee child who's you know, when she was younger, took her there on the ferry, and it is really dangerous. So I think this is a no-brainer. We need to improve the safety and the accessibility, and this project will do that. I would, I, I do think we need to approach NZTA, and I don't know whether you want to formally record that, but this is a public transport project, and it would be good to try and make sure that we're maximising any opportunity for external funding from NZTA. Um, cool. Thanks. Pauline. I'm quite familiar with the Diamond Harbour um, Wharf uh, from my childhood and um, I'm really pleased to see that the bike shed is going to be retained and I think that there's probably quite a few um, heritage items on that wharf that I'd like to be taken care of if possible in this process. So, um, But above all I'm supportive of it because it is not safe at the moment. So well done, thank you. Excellent, I'll put that motion. All those in favour? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried. Uh, and we'll close the meeting with a karakia from Councillor Templeton. Efficient, James, efficient. <laughs> unuhia, unuhia. Unuhia ki te uru tapu nui o te tāne. Ki a wātea, ki a mama, te nakau, te tinana, te wairua i te awa takata. Koe o rā o rongo, whaka iria ake ki ronga. Ki a tina, tina, homie, huie, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.